Hello everyone, welcome back to Taking Back Crypto. My name is Forrest Stevens, and I'm going to address Trump in Bitcoin. Trump versus Bitcoin, Trump, Bitcoin, and crypto. Because um, he likes to differentiate the two, but I'm not sure he knows the difference between the two. I'm not sure he's as educated on this subject as some people may think he is. He seems to be a statist. He seems to care about the US dollar. He seems to want to hold Bitcoin, but only if it's stolen. And I'm coming from all of this from the speech that he made during uh, his time at the Bitcoin conference in uh, uh, Nashville in uh, 2024. So, you know, it's very interesting to have, uh, you know, a former president uh, talk about Bitcoin. Uh, it might seem like a really, really good thing. And I think that it is in the short term, but in the long term, none of what he said is actually good for Bitcoin. And the thing that I will keep coming back to is that politicians need Bitcoin more than Bitcoin needs politicians. Bitcoin has reached the highs of 73,000 without the acceptance of politicians, without the acceptance specifically of politicians in North America. They may tolerate it to some degree. There may be certain ones of uh, politicians out there that do accept it and do try to advocate for it. But in my opinion, what Trump has done and how and the reason he is uh, basically advocating for it is because he cares about the voter block. He cares that there are millions of crypto holders in America and that many of them, a large percentage of them, will be single issue voters. Now, this is game theory playing out because it is more advantageous for um, to be pro crypto, basically, to get those votes because there are very few votes that you will get for being anti crypto. Uh, there are there are no single issue voters or very, very, very few, like minuscule amount that it doesn't actually matter that would vote specifically because they are anti crypto. Those people are basically out of their minds. And there are a few that are like that. I think it's very exciting for a lot of Bitcoiners who have been in this space for a long time to just have basically their interest mentioned by somebody in this mainstream space of politics. It's like when you're watching a Twitch streamer, you donate to them because you want them to say your name. It's that kind of idea. It's like, oh, just please talk positively about Bitcoin. Please, 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 because it's something I care about so much. And I think that that, that idea is really comes from a short term view of what is important. I think in the very short term, if Trump was elected president again, it would pump those bags of Bitcoin and crypto in the very short term. If he followed through on what he talked about, which was stockpiling Bitcoin, of the roughly 200,000 Bitcoin that have been seized from Silk Road, from hacks, and from basically other criminal activities, so they're held by the DOJ, Department of Justice, they would basically transfer those from the Department of Justice to, I suppose, the Treasury account, where they hold 17% of the global gold, where they hold treasuries, they hold foreign treasuries, and they hold assets. It's kind of like the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, but it would be the Strategic Bitcoin Reserve, and he specifically mentioned it as a stockpile. Now. He actually also went on a 60 Minutes interview, I believe it was 60 Minutes, where he talked about how maybe one day we can just bring the national debt and just pick, give them a nice check of crypto, of Bitcoin. And that was probably the worst Donald Trump impersonation that you've ever heard, but I did it anyway. Now, I believe that it's not positive in the long term to have an agency, a company, an organization, a government 
that changes hands roughly every four to eight years, eight years max, their policies are going to change and they're going to hold reserves of something. I think it was very irresponsible of the Biden campaign to use up all the strategic petroleum reserve. Um, now they have to buy it back with at a, at a greater cost because of inflation. Um, and it puts them at risk in a defense situation. I think it is wise for every government to build up a strategic Bitcoin reserve. But I don't think that we as Bitcoin plebs should be advocating for it. I think they should do it for their own personal reasons. I think that it's they're out of their best interest to do so. But I think that I'm not going to support that because they are not responsible holders. I, I don't, I don't support it either way, basically, is what I'm trying to say. I don't care if they buy or not, because they, if they buy, if they accumulate, if they accumulate a lot, they are not going to have the diamond hands. I don't predict them having the diamond hands that Michael Saylor has. I predict that they will end up using it down the line and be another basically manipulator of markets or price suppression of markets. So I want everybody to be able to buy Bitcoin. I want, and, and everybody can, because we can buy it to, you know, the hundred millionth of a Bitcoin. We can buy, we can start stacking Satoshis, which I think that we should all do for our own personal benefit, not because of anything else, not because it'll get us votes. And I actually think that when a politician talks about creating a reserve before they actually start doing it, that that is probably a bad move because that's all that's going to make you do is encourage other nation states and other buyers to accumulate, which drives the price up, which means you're going to get less sats for your dollars. Now, the reason that you would say that you're going to buy a bunch of Bitcoin or hold a bunch of Bitcoin or support Bitcoin prior to doing so is for votes. And I think that comes back to it. And I just want to reiterate the other thing here that is Bitcoin does not need politicians. Politicians need Bitcoin. Governments need Bitcoin. They need it because it is an asset that has no correlation or connection to any one nation. It is not the currency of a country. It is a global asset that is tradable, exchangeable, and is has an absolute max supply of 21 million. It has a slower issuance than gold does. And it is very similar in the idea of a nation holding gold. Because these are true assets that can be traded when needed for something else. I have contradicted myself seemingly in this talk here, but I think that it is in every politician's best interest to advocate for, for Bitcoin. And yet, I think that the way Trump has done it, has advocated for it, is irresponsible for his government, for the nation of the United States, because it would be much smarter to just start doing it. Now, can they do that as a government? I mean, basically, the government is supposed to act in the people's best interest, so they kind of have to have public support before they do something. But we know that that's not really the way government works. They basically do things without you asking them to do it. Do I think that with my qualms about the way Trump is acting about Bitcoin, uh, that he would be a worse pick than Kamala or the Democrats? I think neither of them are good picks. I think you have to pick between a con artist. And in my eyes, Trump is much more an advocate for crypto than he is for Bitcoin. He got a major applause when he talked about uh, getting rid of Gary Gensler, the um, chairman of the SEC. Now, the basically, Gary Gensler, 
he's been a little bit of a problem for Bitcoin. You know, he slowed down the the acceptance of Bitcoin being a, basically a commodity, being able to have a spot ETF. He slowed that down until you know Big Big Daddy uh, Larry said like, okay, now I want in. But he's been a big challenge to crypto at large, and I think that we should have a, an open market basically. But it's the crypto industry that really doesn't want Gary Gensler because of how he's slowed down things because he's, you know, uh, tried to sue Coinbase. He's tried to sue uh, now OpenSeas. Uh, he's tried to um, sue Ripple, uh, XRP, all these different cryptocurrency uh, organizations. I think that Trump is a crypto president, not a Bitcoin president, because he has created lots of NFTs. He... In his speech, one thing that's incredibly interesting is that he was talking about stable coins. Now, stable coins are not on Bitcoin. I mean, you could make stable coins on Bitcoin, and the first ones were on, on Bitcoin, but they are on ETH, they are on Sol, and they are on other cryptocurrencies. And stable coins are a net positive for the US dollar because they, the stable coin issuers, uh, non-algorithmic stablecoin issuers, one-to-one -one asset backed stablecoin issuers buy short-term treasury bonds with the dollars that people give them in exchange for the tokens that they receive. So they actually strengthen the US dollar, they actually provide more debt buyers for the US dollar, and they export the US dollar to more people around the world who only have access to US stable coins, US dollar stable coins, and don't have access to US dollars themselves. And that is a fiat mentality. So largely, if somebody is into crypto, they are into fiat because they don't really believe in crypto as money. They believe in crypto as a technology to do stable coin issues or smart contracts or to have ownership of a link uh, to a JPEG. They believe in selling the cycles. They believe in taking profits into the melting ice cube of dollars, and they are fiat. So you have no good options, is what I'm saying, when it comes to politics. I'm up here, I mean, what am I talking about US politics for? I'm up here in Canada on my boat. I'm a Canadian, but, you know, and, and when I say, you know, I had this conversation with somebody. Uh, I said, sound money should be bipartisan. And they said, don't you mean nonpartisan? Because I'm up in Canada. Here we have a political system that is has a parliament, a, a, an elected parliament. And we have MPs that are from different parties than just the conservatives and liberals. We have the NDPs. We even have the Green Party. They have a seat, a seat or two. I don't even know. And I still say bipartisan because we have the absolute egomaniac moron of Pierre Polyev, and we have the absolute egotistical moron of Justin Trudeau. And those are our two picks. And one of them is pro Bitcoin, pro crypto, and the other one makes fun of the other one. And, and that one that is pro crypto is basically stopped talking about crypto and has, has renounced a little bit of that because it's incredibly volatile and to be pro something when it's high is easy, but when it dips down, it's not easy. So we don't have good options here. We don't have good options in America. We don't probably don't have good options in anywhere. Um, maybe you have better options or worse options. That's debatable. I think that once again, politicians need Bitcoin. Bitcoin does not need politicians. And if, you become a sovereign individual who believes in the ethos of Bitcoin and participates in the economy of Bitcoin and rids yourself of the fiat system, you will no longer need politicians.